Welcome to Project MCube, Mentoring Mathematical Minds, a series of supplemental curriculum units developed to motivate and challenge mathematically talented students in grades 3 through 6. Project MCube introduces advanced math content and focuses on critical and creative problem solving and reasoning. My name is Valerie Josie. I have 31 years in the public school system, 21 years as an elementary classroom teacher. After that, I served in the curriculum office as a math coach, as the professional development school facilitator working with pre-service teachers and with first-year teachers, and as the elementary math coordinator. I began working with Project M Squared, a primary mathematics program in 2008, and the move to include Project M Cube was a natural fit. Both M Squared and M Cube were written and developed by some of the same authors with basically the same goals and strategies used in both programs. Since my retirement from the public school system in the state of Texas, I have worked as an elementary math consultant, sharing what I have learned about teaching math in programs that include all of the best practices and make math something real and fun for both children and teachers. Teachers strive to use good mathematics tasks in the classroom, but what exactly makes a task good? Well, a good task has important, useful mathematics embedded in it. It allows students to approach problem solving in multiple ways using different solution strategies. A good task allows for different solutions or different positions to be taken or defended. It requires higher level thinking and problem solving. A good task encourages engagement and discourse, contributes to conceptual developments, and enables the teacher to assess student learning and difficulties. You will find all of these descriptives evident in the lessons in Project MCube. The agenda for our session today is to look at the goals of Project MCube, to look at the Project MCube units, to explore the language arts component, a very rich component of this program, to look at the program components, and also to explore the unit features. We will end by walking through a lesson. So let's get started. When the authors developed the program, they set out to meet several goals. The goals of Project MCube are to create challenging curriculum units that motivate students, to engage students in critical thinking, problem solving, and communication activities, to foster inquiry, to develop deep conceptual understanding of mathematical content and processes, to increase mathematics achievement and attitudes, to target the participation of traditionally underrepresented students, economically disadvantaged, limited English proficiency, and minorities. This program meets and exceeds these goals. This chart shows the units available in Mentoring Mathematical Minds. The units cover all five strands of mathematics and are labeled for levels 3, 4, 4, 5, and 5, 6. All units support the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics Standards, the Curriculum Focal Points, and the Common Core State Standards of Math, as well as the Standards for Mathematical Practice. Each unit is designed to motivate, challenge, and engage mathematically talented students. Although Project MCube is a gifted mathematics program, it is not simply more difficult computation, it is not moving faster and covering the next grade level standards. It is not just teaching processes, and it is definitely not a sit and get program. What Project MCube is, is a math curriculum for gifted and talented students. It offers advanced content new to students. Students think like mathematicians. They have higher level critical and creative thinking, and they're inquiring. Students question the answers rather than simply answer the questions. In Mentoring Mathematical Minds, the curriculum focuses on the NCTM mathematical processes. These are problem solving, reasoning and logical thinking, 
making connections, representing, and communication. When using this program, students are engaged as practicing mathematicians. They're involved in projects, investigations, and games. They are using higher level critical thinking skills, and they're challenged by the depth and complexity. The authors of Project MQ began constructing this program in early 2000, before the Common Core standards were written. Yet the program is nicely tied into the Common Core math practice standards, clearly addressing each of these standards. Although every one of these standards is embedded throughout Project MQ, practice standard number three stands out over all. Construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. Project MQ uses a variety of specific talk moves to move students from oral discussions into their writing. The mathematical practice standards are simply best teaching practices, and those are foundational to mentoring mathematical minds. Since Project MQ was developed before Common Core Standards were written, Kendall Hunt has constructed correlation charts to show the alignment between the MQ curriculum and the Common Core State Standards in Mathematics. Contact Barb Shoup or Jerry Lynn Hilsey for more information on these documents. Both Barb's and Jerry Lynn's contact information are available at the end of this webinar. Project MCUBE has strong language arts components woven into the lesson. These components are speaking, listening, and writing. In addition to embedding language arts into the program, the Project MCUBE learning environment should create a spirit of inquiry in the classroom where students are eager to take a guess and willing to share their guesses with the class. The environment should foster respect for each other in each other's ideas. Students need to be taught to listen carefully to what their classmates say and to carefully consider all ideas and opinions as good mathematicians would do. The teacher is the key to setting the stage for these kinds of respectful and engaging mathematical discussions. Good dialogue helps foster conceptual understanding. One way to establish a mathematically vigorous environment that is respectful of all participants is to expect students to uphold particular behaviors. These behaviors are listed as rights and obligations. The student's rights are, you have the right to ask questions. You have the right to make a contribution to an attentive, responsive audience. You have the right to be treated respectfully and you have the right to have your ideas discussed, not you. Students' obligations are, you are obligated to speak loudly enough for others to hear. You are obligated to listen to others in order to understand. You are obligated to agree or disagree with the speaker's comments and explain why. It is important to discuss with students what these expectations entail and how they apply to actual classroom practices. To facilitate thinking in oral communication, particular talk moves are implemented. The talk moves are revoicing. The teacher restates a student's idea and then verifies whether it is accurate. Repeat, rephrase. The teacher asks other students to restate an idea. Agree or disagree and why. After the topic of discussion has been established, the teacher has students analyze ideas and defend their positions using mathematical reasoning. Add on. The teacher asks students to expand upon the idea already stated. Wait time. The teacher waits to call on a student after a question has been posed. Wait time is also given for a student to respond after he is called on. Students need time to process. We have to allow them that time. And partner talk is when students are given opportunities to discuss their ideas with a partner before participating in the class discussion. We want to move the classroom discussion from teacher to student and student to teacher to involving all students. 
For more information on students' rights and obligations and on the talk moves, see the on-demand webinar on oral communication. To connect the oral communication to written communication, Project MCube uses a math messaging board. This is an example of the math messaging board. Each lesson has two Think Deeply questions. These questions capture the essence of the lesson. It's what you want the students to get out of the lesson. In the Talk About It section, students restate the Think Deeply question in their own words. The Keep a Record section is for students to write down each new idea brought up in the discussion as bullet points. Wrap It Up signals a discussion that encourages consensus and mathematical understanding. Then Write About It has students return to the student mathematician's journal and write their response to the Think Deeply question. This connects the talk and the writing. In written communication, we are looking for the use of rich mathematical vocabulary, clarifying the argument, using details to support the reasoning, and possibly including a table, chart, or other appropriate math symbols. There are also tips for successful writing in Mathematicians Write On. This is a page from the student's journal. This is an example of a Think Deeply from the Grade 4 unit Getting Into Shapes. Miranda has made a discovery. She claims that all squares are rectangles. Do you agree or disagree? Explain your answer. On the right, you can see the student's bullet points that they recorded on the math messaging board, uh, points that were taken during the class discussion. This student responded to the Think Deeply. I agree to Miranda's theory. I agree because the square has all the attributes of a rectangle. Those attributes are four sides, four 90 degree angles, and two sets of opposite parallel and congruent lines. A square fits all those attributes, but it also has one extra attribute, that all its sides are congruent. A square also has many other names. Those are rectangle, parallelogram, rhombus, and quadrilateral, but its clearest name is square. This child clearly understands the attributes of a rectangle and why a square is also a rectangle. For more information on writing in Project M Cube, see the on demand webinar on written communication. So, what are the components of the Project M Cube program? For each unit, there's a teacher guide and corresponding student mathematician journals. Word wall cards are available for each unit. Each vocabulary card has a matching card with the definition. These cards can be displayed in the classroom and also lend themselves to a variety of activities to reinforce mathematical vocabulary. Pictured here are examples of hint cards. Each lesson has several hint cards that are designed to move students thinking forward and allow them to successfully engage in the investigation. These are one way to differentiate instruction to meet the needs of students. Another way to differentiate is through the Think Beyond cards. The cards challenge students who have demonstrated mastery of the objectives and for mathematically talented students who grasp the concept quickly. Manipulative kits specific to each unit are also available. These kits contain manipulatives needed to do the activities in the unit as well as some consumable materials. Some examples of the manipulatives found in the kits are 3D tangrams, snap cubes, color tiles, pattern blocks, measuring tapes, and some consumable materials. There's so many things in the kits that are just needed and helpful when doing the lessons. Flourish is Kendall Hunt's digital learning network. As an online component for Project MCube, Flourish provides an interactive learning experience and digital tools designed to engage and motivate students. In addition to the digital teacher guides, there are assessment tools and interactive lessons and games to facilitate teaching. This brings us to the Project MCube unit features. 
The teacher guide contains many pieces to help support the teacher in his or her instruction. There are helpful prior experiences so that students have the necessary foundation upon which to build. Suggested unit pacing helps the teachers in planning. The materials list lists all materials and supplies needed for each lesson. The unit test and rubric can be used as both a pre and a post test to show growth. A unit celebration gives ideas for a culminating activity, frequently involving families, thus fostering the home and school connection. The family letter is available in both English and Spanish to inform parents what their students will be learning. Checkups found at the end of each chapter are just one of several means of assessment in the unit. At the back of each unit, there is a section that contains many helpful resources. Don't forget to check this out. Each lesson in Mentoring Mathematical Minds has features formatted to assist the teacher. The Big Mathematical Ideas is a brief overview of the lesson while clearly stating the big ideas that students should understand from engaging with the activities. Objectives list the important math ideas in terms of student understanding. The materials lists everything needed in the lesson by what the student needs, what the teacher needs, and the supplies needed. Mathematical language defines and often illustrates important math terms and concepts used in the lesson. These parts are the planning phase of the lesson. Next is the teaching phase. This part is divided into initiate and investigate. The amount of time required for each part is indicated at the onset of that part. The lesson pages shown here are from the Amazing Race to 100,000 Miles, a lesson in the Level 3-4 unit, How Big is Big? You can see that a half day is recommended for the Initiate section and one full day for the Investigate. The recommended times are based on a 60-minute math class. Here you can see that this investigation has students playing a game and keeping a travel log. The black line master for the game cards are included in the teacher guide. The travel log is a page in the student mathematician's journal. The teacher guide gives examples and illustrations so game directions are very clear and easy to understand. This page shows the mathematical communication section for this lesson. There are always two think deeply questions for each lesson. These questions reflect the essence of the lesson. If students can successfully respond to the question, then they understand the skills and concepts intended as the lesson's goal. Following a Think Deeply question, there may be ideas for using the math messaging board or a scenario to show part of a possible classroom discussion. There will always be a section What to Look for in Responses, followed by possible difficulties. These will help teachers in planning where to go next. The cards pictured here are to show that materials such as these are provided for you in the lesson. Following each lesson is a quick look. This is the shortened form of the lesson written as a set of steps for each part. It is at the end of each lesson so that teachers will first read the more detailed lesson. The longer form better explains the mathematics, provides tips and illustrations, uses examples and non-examples, and provides so much more information that will increase the depth of the lesson and better engage students. I strongly encourage all teachers to read the longer version of the lesson several times if needed. Their students will be the ones who benefit. Pictured here are the Level 3-4 units. Unraveling the Mystery of the Moly Stone which is on place value and numeration. Factors, multiples, and leftovers, a unit linking multiplication and division. How big is big? Understanding and using large numbers. Awesome algebra, looking for patterns and generalizations. Digging for data, collecting and displaying and analyzing data. 
in search of the Yeti, measuring up, down, and all around. The Level 4-5 units are the 10th Street Pet Sanctuary, Understanding and Using Decimals, Treasures from the Attic, Exploring Fractions, At the Mall with Algebra, Working with Variables and Equations, and Getting into Shapes, Exploring Relationships among Two-Dimensional and Three-Dimensional Shapes. The units for Level 5-6 are Record Makers and Breakers, Analyzing graphs, tables, and equations. What are your chances on probability and action? Designer boxes, exploring volume and surface area. Fun at the carnival, using proportional reasoning. An Earth Day every day, making sense of percents. So now let's look at a lesson. This lesson is the amazing race to 100,000 miles found in the level 3-4 number unit, How Big is Big? Understanding and Using Large Numbers. It is Lesson 3 in Chapter 1. It's helpful to know that Lesson 1 deals with reading and writing numbers to 1 million. In Lesson 2, students compare, order, add, and subtract numbers up to 10,000. Students each decide on a travel destination anywhere in the world. They determine the distance in miles from their school and design an index card with the needed information. In Lesson 2, these cards are placed on a number line. They're used again in Lesson 3 to play the Amazing Race to 100,000 Miles game. As you can see in this slide, the focus of Lesson 3 has students using numbers up to 100,000 to add, subtract, multiply, and divide distances. In the Initiate section of this lesson, students build on their knowledge from Lesson 2 to create a physical model of a number line from 0 to 100,000. After marking 10,000s and then 1,000s on the number line, they then write numbers that fit these descriptors. A student reads the number, writes it on a sticky note, and places it on the number line. Note that numbers using the four operations are also placed on the number line. These are numbers such as a number that is 10 times as big as a ton, a number one-third of the way between 0 and 72,630, or a number that is five times as big as 15,000. You can read the other descriptors on the slide. Students can also make up descriptions of numbers and choose another student to place that number on the number line. Now comes the investigate section of the lesson where students play the amazing race to 100,000 miles. On the right you can see the list of materials needed for the game and the travel log found in the student mathematicians journal is on the left. Players take turns turning over card from Oh the Places We Go deck those are the index cards created in Lesson 2. They calculate and record the round-trip distance on the travel log. Then the player turns over a card from Oh the Challenges We Face deck and each player records any calculations needed, records the challenge miles and adjusts the final mileage for this leg of the trip in the travel log. The player then moves his or her marker on the meter stick to the final miles for that round. Look at the example. The first card drawn is for Disney World. The round trip distance, 802 miles, is recorded. The challenge card directs the player to multiply the miles on the trip by 10. This is recorded and the sum of the round trip and the challenge miles is recorded. The next player then plays in the same manner. On the player's second round, the round trip mileage to New York City is calculated and recorded. The challenge card has the hotel close for renovations, so the traveler must stay 89 miles closer to home. Therefore, the player must subtract 178 miles from the round trip miles. The miles for the round two trip are added to the round one trip for the cumulative miles after round two. The first player to reach 100,000 miles is the winner. 
Now comes the Think Deeplys. The first Think Deeply says, Sasha's challenge card read, Multiply to include all the members in your family. She has four people in her family, and her trip was 6,997 miles. So she rounded the number to 7,000 and multiplied by four and got 28,000. She thought, now all I have to do is subtract three to get my answer. A. Do you agree or disagree with her reasoning? Why? And B. Find the total mileage. The second thing deeply says, you have a total mileage so far of 87,996. You are almost there. But your challenge card tells you to subtract 2,049. You begin by rounding. 88,000 minus 2,050. Continue with this method to get your answer. A. Explain your thinking as you work. And B. What is your final mileage? Remember, a class discussion and the math messaging board precede the students writing independently. Remember also there are hint cards and think beyond cards to help the teacher differentiate to meet the needs of a wide range of students. And that's a quick walkthrough of a Project M-Cube lesson. For more information, check out the website projectmcube.org.